All right. Um, so my name is uh, George V. Uh, I run product at uh, Hortonworks for uh, emerging product side. So emerging product side at Hortonworks includes things like HDF, Hortonworks Dataflow, which consists of Apache projects, NiFi, um, Apache Kafka, uh, Streaming Analytics Manager, Spark Streaming, Storm, all things, all things streaming is, uh, is what I do. And so uh, for the next 40 minutes, uh, I'm also a committer on the Apache Metron project. So a lot of things, a lot of the technologies that we use in Apache Metron are all things to do with, uh, with streaming, with things like Kafka and so forth. And uh, what I want to do over the next 40 minutes is to talk about kind of next-gen tooling for building streaming analytics apps. So I'm from Chicago. And uh, one of the biggest problems that I see customers in the enterprises have is that um, there is not a plethora of skills when it comes to finding folks with hardcore streaming expertise, right? So if you want to find somebody with Spark Streaming or Storm or Flink and so forth, it's not, uh, they're, not they're, uh, they're hard to find. And so what can we do to build better tooling to help traditional Java developers, ETL developers start to be productive and building complex streaming analytics apps? That's what this talk is going to be. So I've got some exciting stuff. Hopefully you'll be excited. I'm excited about it. Before I start, a uh, few questions to kind of get a profile of the audience. How many of you are uh, app dev developers? All right, so I got about 50%. How many are DevOps, operations, management, those kind of things? Probably the other half, 50. Um, two more questions. How many folks have built uh, a streaming analytics app, a streaming app? So we got a majority of the room uh, doing it. How many have used, uh, in the latest set of streaming apps you guys have built, how many have used Storm? OK, we got four or five. How many have used Flink? Two or three. How many have used Spark Streaming? OK, good. So Spark Streaming. And then uh, last, how many have used Kafka Streams? OK, Spark Streaming is good. OK, good. I think that gives me good context, so let's, let's get right into it. So uh, what I'm going to focus this talk around is a open source, it's Apache licensed uh, open source project called Streaming Analytics Manager. Um, it's been led, it's been in the works for the last year and a half, um, uh, led by Hortonworks and a number of other companies. And it's all about um, how do we allow traditional developers to build streaming applications without knowing the underlying streaming engine, right? So if I'm an ETL developer, before all the Informaticas and the Ab Initios and all the worlds came in, you had to har write hardcore code. Now the tooling, drag and drop tooling to build complex ETL applications exists. It makes developers, things, organizations to build apps to, to production faster. That's what the goal of Streaming Analytics Manager is. How do we build streaming analytics apps complex streaming analytics apps and bring them to market faster. And you've got the choice of what underlying streaming engine you want to deploy that to. You want to deploy it to Storm or Spark Streaming or Flink and so forth. So it's agnostic to the underlying streaming engine, right? And so the, the visual interface that you see, um, there should be nothing in that interface that gives away or is specific to a specific type of underlying streaming engine. It's one of the key design principles. Uh, the first two. The third and fourth is about extensibility, right? So when I work with customers, right, we've got a number of out-of-the-box processors and sources and syncs. If I want to connect to Kafka, if I want to send data to HDFS or HBase or Cassandra, Elastic or Solar, we've got all of those out of the box. But inevitably, there's going to be custom processors, custom sources, custom syncs that you want to implement as part of this and use this as part of this user interface. So extensibility is a key design principle. So we've got a simple SDK where you can build your own operators, user-defined functions, build where if you want to talk to Amazon Kinesis as a source or you want to push data to DynamoDB, you can do that using the SDK and have those widgets available when you build the streaming apps. And then the last point is schema is a first-class citizen, right? What that means is, when you build a streaming analytics app, and it seems like most of the folks in this room have, understanding what the schema is and having that schema when you build your data pipeline, your streaming analytics pipeline, is key. Right? The first thing you're probably doing if it's 
um, Spark streaming, you're defining your schema up front, right? Um, or you're defining, um, and you're doing that with any streaming engine. So having a first class support for schema is important to give the developer the ability to build these streaming applications. So that, um, so if you guys want to check out the, the project uh, that I'll be talking through, that's the GitHub URL, um, or it's also part of HDF. You can download the Hortonworks HDF distribution um, streaming analytics manager, we call SAM, is in there. So who are the users of SAM? There's really three user personas that SAM caters to. One is the app developer. Right? So think of this as it's an IDE for the app developer to build streaming applications without knowing watermarking with Flink or understanding spouts and bolts with Storm. Right? All those things, I've, I've implemented streaming applications for customers and all those. You're agnostic to that. The second one is operations, right? service discovery. Most streaming applications is a composition of different big data services. What does that mean? Right? Most streaming apps, you're consuming from a messaging system like Kafka, Amazon Kinesis, so so forth. Um, you are then persisting that data to some big data store like Cassandra, Elastic, or Solar, or HDFS. And so being able to figure out how to connect to those services and so forth, service discovery and so forth should be easy, right? Application performance monitoring, once the app is deployed, should be easy, right? That's really all within the operations persona. The tool has capabilities for that. And then the business analyst, right? And this is where a lot of customers tell me, and you know, this is a, a common thing that customers ask. They literally say, can I get Tableau for streaming, right? What that means is, can I tap into the stream and ask questions about that stream, right? And do descriptive analytics and create dashboards and uh, visualizations of that streaming data, as opposed to after it's gone into my data lake and I've got my batch ETL jobs running and then what's, what's output of that, I get to visualize. I want to ask questions of this stream directly. And that's really for that business analyst. So those are the three personas, and we'll walk through as we walk through the tool how we address each of these. So at the end of the day, um, you guys are all familiar with different streaming engines based on your hands being raised. It's all about doing analytics on the stream. It's not really about data movement, right? There's other tools for data movement. That's what ETL is or things like NiFi, right? This is all about when you're moving the data, I want to do analytics on the stream, right? And these are the different types of analytics in terms of predictive or prescriptive and descriptive. I'm not going to go into too much, but it's all about analytics is what we're talking about here. With that said, um, I always like to explain things in the context of a use case. Okay, so let's take a fictitious trucking company that has a fleet of trucks. On these trucks, they've got a couple of sensors, right? Um, so one is a geo sensor, one is a speed sensor. We'll talk about the schemas in a second. And this company wants to do real-time analytics. What's the average driving speed of a particular driver? If it's over a certain threshold, I want alerts. Can I have a model that my data science team has created and apply the model to determine if a, if a truck or a driver is going to be in danger, right? And so <coughs> for this use case, let's set up these two sensors. And this is the schema for these two sensors, right? So I've got a geo event. Um, it has information about the truck driver. It has information about uh, the driver, the truck, the event type, um, and the geolocation lat and long. And I've got the second sensor, which is a speed stream that captures information about um, the speed of that particular driver. And these are two separate sensors with creating two separate streams, right? And so what are common streaming analytics requirements, right? So assume that these two sensors are streaming data into a Kafka topic each in its own individual Kafka topics, right? So things that I want to do as part of analytics. Well, I want to be able to join these streams, right? These are two separate streams, but the value for me is to ask questions when I've joined the geo stream of that particular driver with the speed stream, maybe a number of other streams. So joining has to be a first class citizen of any streaming engine, and Flink and Spark Streaming and Storm, um, all of, and, um, Spark and Structured Streaming all support that, right? So we need to be able to do that within SAM. Um, being able to connect to sources and sync. So in this case, I need to be able to easily connect to a Kafka topic, create the stream, and then be able to join these streams. Applying rules and filters um, to the stream. Um, and then aggregations over windows of time. That's a common analytical primitive on the streaming world, right? So I've got an unbounded tuple of events that are coming in. And I want to be able to bind a window that says, hey, what's the average speed of that driver over a three-minute period? 
That's a, it's a common primitive in the streaming world. Or you can do primitives over, instead of time, you can do over count based and so forth, right? And then requirements five through eight are more complex things, right? This is where most of your organizations have a data science team. They're building analytical models. They're using a data lake. They're using Spark. They've got the building of the models correct. They've done the um, being able to test it and tune it. Now they want to operationalize that model, right? Streaming analytics manager or any kind of streaming engine should be able to take models and be able to execute it on the stream of events or the batch of events that come in, right? And so as part of that, you know, it's not as simply as, hey, let me take this, uh, this set of coefficients based on this model and apply the raw streaming events. You have to enrich the stream with the features that that model requires, right? So requirements five through eight is all about, hey, I need to enrich the information with weather information. I need to enrich it with the information with information about the driver in terms of certification status. I need to enrich the information about how many hours that that particular driver drove last week, how many miles did he drive. Right? So there's a series of enrichments that you have to do on the stream to get the features, and then you have to execute uh, whatever model your data science team has created, and you're doing that all within the stream. Common requirements, and um, I'm going to walk you through how to do all of these, implement all of these with, um, with Streaming Analytics Manager. So with that said, those eight requirements, um, over, over the years, I've implemented those types of requirements on a number of streaming engines, right? So what you're seeing here um, is implementing this within Storm, right? So, if you, so for probably about 30% of the room that raised their hand, some of this might look familiar. Um, probably 20 different classes I had to implement. I had to create things like the spouts for the two Kafka topics. I had to, create, I had to use the join APIs, the window APIs within Storm to create my tumbling windows. I had to do things in terms of persisting this back into whatever store that I'm doing. But it's messy, it's hairy, it's ugly, right? And it takes a lot of time to productionalize this, right? The other set of hands that I saw was around Spark Streaming or Structured Streaming, the Spark, two, um, Spark Streaming 2.0. It's easier, right? The, the APIs are easier to use and so forth. And this is what this looks like. I'm using Zeppelin here. So I've set up, you know, I've set up some config variables. First thing I do is I create schemas, right? Um, and then I essentially create a streaming data frame for each of those Kafka topics. That's um, these two steps. Then I'm joining those two streams. Some of this you guys are laughing, you guys are familiar with it. Um, after I've joined the streams with watermarking, I can do filtering on the violation events. I can then essentially do group buys to be able to calculate the driver average speed. And then uh, I do some filter filtering based on the average I calculated if he's driving over 80 or 100 kilometers alert. And then I'm sending this to some downstream system, in this case, a Kafka topic. Guys, this is not trivial either, right? There's still a lot of code. You need to have deep Spark streaming expertise. It, uh, Spark streaming has made it easier, right? But can we get easier than this, right? Where if we're talking about agility from design to productionalization, how do we make this faster? Okay. This is what I hope to convey to you in the next, now I've got 30 more minutes, right? Can we do this easier with what tools that we've experienced, that we already have experience with, with traditional ETL tools, or even with things like NAV? Anyone familiar with Apache NiFi? Right? That's a great tool. All of our customers use it, right? Just because of that agility of building complex data flows using a drag and drop paradigm. That's the goal behind Hortonworks' vision of this tool called Streaming Analytics Manager. Screenshots suck, so let's actually walk through some of these demos, all right, in real time. So I'm going to implement requirements one through four, right? I'm going to actually do that live in front of you guys, if the demo guides are, are kind. And what I'm going to switch to is this is um, Streaming Analytics Manager. This is dashboard. I've got about four apps. I've got one app that's running. So I'm going to go ahead and implement those first four requirements. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll call this Berlin Streaming App 5. And then I'm going to pick an environment. I'll talk about what environments are in a second. Now I've got my empty canvas. I saw most of your folks uh, raise their hand about NiFi, so this should look very familiar. We took some of the design patterns and best practices from Apache NiFi as we built this tool. Okay, how's the resolution? You guys can see? Okay, 
So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create my Kafka stream. Drag over Kafka. My resolution will work. All right, so I dragged over Kafka. Let's go ahead and configure it. So I'm going to call this. I'm going to create my geo stream. And it, so it knows configuration about what Kafka topic, because that environment, I've, conf I've essentially pointed that to a particular cluster. So in this case, this cluster is being managed by Ambari. So Sam knows about all of the endpoints that a cluster manager is monitoring for you. Right? So I, when I created the app, I picked the dev environment. That dev environment has a set of services endpoints. So this is service discovery at work. So as a developer, I don't need to fiddle with, oh, what is that you know, Kafka bootstrap URL, those kind of things. right? So it gives me a list of Kafka topics to choose from. I pick the first one. And notice what happens. I've got a schema. So remember that fourth design principle, I say schema is a first class citizen. So another open source project out there is called the schema registry, where you can essentially register schemas for streaming um, event sources. So a Kafka topic is, a, is an example of that. So with Sam, Streaming Analytics Manager says, hey, you've picked this topic called Truck Events Avro. I'm going to go talk to the schema registry and say if there is a schema registered for it. And I'm going to show you that schema. And as a developer, this is a schema I'm going to work with to build my streaming application. Okay. Last thing I want to do is give it the Kafka Consumer Group. Let's call this Berlin Geo 3. With a few clicks, I've created my first stream. Right? Let's quickly create the second stream, because I want to show you guys joins. We'll call this the speed stream. And I'm going to pick the truck speed events Avro. And when I click that, notice a separate schema comes that has information about the speed and so forth. And we'll call this consumer group Berlin speed Three. So I've just created my two Kafka streams, right? If I show you the storm code or my Kafka uh, or stru uh, Spark structured streaming code, it doesn't get any simpler than doing it this. So let's now show you some interesting things. Let's go ahead and join these streams. That's the, that was my second requirement. So I dragged over the join processor, connected my first stream into the join, and connected my second stream into the join, right? And let's go ahead and configure the join. So in this case, I'm picking the first stream. What, is, what, I, what do I want to join with from the first stream? I've got driver ID. This is where schemas become extremely helpful. Right? What, kind of inner, what kind of join do you want to do? I'm going to do an inner join. On that second stream, on that second stream, I want to join on the driver ID. Um, this does um, time-based or um, uh, processing time, so based on what time do you want to use for this particular join because of late, late arriving data and so forth. So I want to say, hey, wait two seconds for a two-second window before you, before you actually join up. And then go ahead now and join these. And what you see here is now I've got a new schema that's the join of these two streams, the geo stream, lat long, you see on the right, as well as the speed stream. And I've joined that on the driver ID field from both those streams. Right? So I've done an extremely complex thing here, um, exposing that through a very easy to use interface. Right? So now I've joined the stream. So now let's do filtering. That was requirement three. Right? So I've joined the streams. Now I want to filter down the streams of, of events that I'm only interested in. So I'm going to drag over the rule processor, connected from my join stream. And we'll call this filter event type. We'll call this, I'm only interested in violation events. And the definition of my violation events is if event type doesn't equal normal. Right? So you can do complex, um, simple, simple uh, filters, or you can actually execute SQL on the stream for more complex filtering rules. So now I've just implemented a rule. And now I've filtered down my stream. So what have I done so far? I've created a stream for each of my Kafka topics. I've joined those two streams based on a particular field. And now I've filtered. Now let's do actual interesting stuff. So I want to be able to calculate the average speed of this driver right, using the aggregation over a time-based window. So I'm going to drag over an aggregate processor. 
So we've got support for both sliding windows and tumbling windows. You guys should be familiar with that based on the hands that I, that I saw. And we'll call this driver average speed. So whenever you're doing windows, it's, it's a grouping function, right? So what do I want to group on? What keys? Driver ID, driver name, and route. Right? Um, what is the window that you want to calculate this average for? Well, uh, it's for a three-minute window. And what do you want to do at the end of the window? So we've got unbounded stream of events. We've defined a three-minute window. At the end of the three-minute window, I've got an average, or I've got a speed field, and I want to execute an, uh, an aggregation function called average. And I want the result to be put into the speed average um, field. So now my output schema is information about the driver and now the ag at my speed. Right? So I've now just done, so if you look at what, just to give you some perspective, um, this is what my code would have looked like if I did this in, in Spark Structured Streaming. Right? And if it was in Storm, it's even more uglier. Right? Um, and again, how do we give this to the masses? Masses means average developers, average or even senior developers, um, that don't know the underlying streaming engines, right? So at this point, I've calculated the speed. Now I want to apply a business rule that says, hey, I'm only interested in high-speeding drivers. So let's add a rule. We'll call this speeding. And we'll define speeding driver rule as anything I'm from Chicago, so I'm going to say my, um, miles per hour here, greater than 80. So now I've filtered my stream such that I'm only get events where my drivers have been speeding over a three minute window, and I want to now send these events to a dashboard, right? So one of the things that Sam has provided is actually a sync into Druid. Um, so if you, if you were at the keynote, there was mention of Druid. Druid is a real-time streaming OLAP engine, right? So this is actually, so one of the it's really good for is high-speed stream ingest of streaming data. And then you can essentially slice and dice the data, and we provide visualizations for it. So let's stream these violation events into this Druid cube. I'm curious, anyone familiar with Druid or played with Druid? Wow, OK, we got almost half the audience. That's good. So we'll call this dashboard speeding drivers. What's the cube? Let's put this into alerts via speeding drivers cube. What are the dimensions, the driver information, and the speed? And now we've just sent these real-time alerts into, uh, into a dashboard, right? This in Storm would have taken me probably, if, if you're a medium, intermediate developer in Storm, probably a week or so. In Stark Search or something, maybe less than that. And I've just done it in, in about 10 minutes or so forth, right? So, so the idea here is, now how do you deploy this? So here you can pick the streaming engine. I've configured this right now to push this into Storm. But we support things like sp um, Spark Structure Streaming and so forth. And what this is doing behind the scenes is, it's taking that, it's generating the code, based on whatever underlying engine you've selected, and it's actually deploying that to that underlying streaming engine, right? And so what does this look like? So I talked about this tool caters to three different personas. I just showed you the developer persona. So the business analyst, and this is what I get, the business analyst says, hey, I want to do Tableau for streaming, right? And so what you can essentially do is I can go into that cube. So this is what you're looking at superset, which is a visualization as part of our platform on top of things like Druid or Hive and so forth. And I'm going to look at that speeding drivers cube. And, I, and maybe a basic question I want to ask is, hey, over the last hour, how many speeding violations have been on the road? Right? So let's pick one hour. We support about 30-plus uh, visualizations, all D3-based. And let's just do for on just big number with number line. And I've got 27 violations over the last hour of these fleet of trucks who, who are drivers that are speeding, based on my, my, my simulator. So let's maybe mask maybe something more interesting. Which are these drivers? Who are these drivers that are speeding? So I'm going to change the visualization to maybe something like word cloud. 
over the last hour, and we'll change this to driver name, pick that dimension. So I've got this uh, two, um, two guys, Joe and Suresh, that, that are speeding the most. Right? So you get the idea. Right? Um, and again, what have we done? We've taken something extremely complex, given tools to the developer. We've given tools to the business analyst um, to be able to then ask questions. And notice this app is up. And you'll s start to see here, as part of this, this is the Berlin. Three seconds, it's already actually starting to, uh, I've got the simulator running. And, you, and this is from an operations perspective, you can start to see. It. Notice if you're familiar with NiFi, it looks very similar, right, in terms of seeing the operational metrics at a DAG level and those kind of things. Okay? So time check 425, we're doing good. So hopefully you get a sense. So if you look back at those requirements, implementing those requirements one through four, right, um, in a pretty easy manner, and all of us to some extent have dealt things with Storm or Spark Streaming or Flink, um, it's still not easy, right? So having a tool like this and giving it gives my developers um, impressive productivity, right? So now let's maybe talk about some more interesting stuff, right? How do we implement requirements five through eight, okay? And so what are we actually doing here, right? So we're saying, hey, I'm less interested in about what's happening now, but what could happen on the roads with my drivers and with my trucks, right? And so I've got a data science team in my organization that says, hey, I can tell you, I built a model that can actually predict if a particular driver or a truck is going to uh, be in trouble, right? And so, and this data science team is, hey, I was able to take information about the features that I need is weather information. It's information about how many, how many miles and hours that that particular driver drove the previous week. And it's also HR information about the driver. Is he certified on, on different things and so forth? And so what, what are we done, right? We're at a DataWorks conference, right? And so within a data lake, this is one of the key use cases. I can build the productive model. I can use things like Zeppelin or whatever tool, Python, whatever tool you guys are using, right? And use things like Spark and so forth to get subsets of the data, right? Play with different features, create models, tune those models, right? And you've essentially built that predictive model based with all this data that you have. What then, so a model might look like this, right? So this is a um, Smart ML Lib model that I created, a logistical regression model. Um, it has seven features, right? Um, so the features are information about the weather, so fogginess, raininess, snow, information about driver certification, information about miles and hours he drove the previous week, and it spits out Hey, is he likely, is this a driver or a truck we need to, we need to watch out for? Okay? And so what, what's within SAM, what now you can do is get that closed loop on that model, which is how do you then take that model from your data science team and operationalize it and score that model within, within. So what, what are the steps? So SAM has this notion of a model registry, right? And that's the idea of my data science teams has models, they publish. You can publish this into this model registry. And then you can use SAM to take those raw events, enrich it with the features that that particular model requires, um, normalize it, right? So there's a set of normalization steps that you need to change that data into the inputs that that model requires. And then you can execute that model from that model registry on that stream and then be able to alert and stuff on it, OK? So I'm going to walk you through that in terms of how you would actually do it with SAM, building off that application we created. Right? Um, for time's sake, I've already built it ahead of time, so I'll walk you through each one. So what we implemented was this top part, right? Driver average speed, is he speeding? And then if he is speeding, push it into a dashboard. The second half of this <coughs> is I've created a new rule that says non-violation event. So this is a case where I'm not interested if the driver's you know, creating violations right now. So just give me normal events. And I want to fork that stream into this second flow that I want to create. <coughs> the first thing I would do before I actually go through this enrichment process is one of the uh, the patterns within streaming is this what's known as the split join pattern, right? So if I've got 
multiple enrichments that I need to do. In this case, I have to do a lookup in the HR information table, because that's one set of features, another lookup into the driver certification um, table, and then a lookup calling the weather service API. So I want to be able to split those streams, do those enrichments in parallel, and those join those streams back together. So what I'm doing here is I'm cl creating a split join value that allows me to join those streams back together. That's my first step. After I've split it, I've done now that I'm doing the three enrichments in parallel, right? So the first enrichment, what I'm doing is I'm doing, this is a common use case, where I want to enrich the information with the driver ID and do a lookup in HBase or Cassandra and enrich it with two additional fields, which is the two fe additional features I, I want, which is how many hours and miles that particular drove last week. So what I'm doing is, in this particular, I get to execute a SQL. So I'm using Phoenix over HBase, which allows me to execute SQL um, on top of things like HBase. Um, and it says, hey, give me, this is the select statement where I, I capture the hours logged and miles logged from the timesheet table in HBase using the driver ID that comes from my input stream. And my output is my two enriched fields with my split join key. That's my first enrichment. I'm doing that in parallel. My second enrichment is I'm doing a lookup on HR information table. So I'm getting the certification status and the wage plan of that particular driver. And I've captured that as two additional features. That's my second enrichment. And then my third enrichment is I'm calling the weather service API to be able taking the lat long location and the time. And then it gives me information about um, fogginess, raininess, and the windiness of that particular lat long location, right? So I've now just done three enrichments in my stream in parallel, and now I get to join those streams together, right? So Sam, based on the engine you're working with, most streaming engines support streaming of multiple, uh, joining of multiple streams, and now I've just done um, a join across these three joins, an inner join, right? Where I've taken these three streams, and then the output represents the seven additional enriched features that my model requires. OK? So I've joined the stream now. And then the last thing I, I need to do before I call the model is normalization. right? If anyone tells you, hey, I can take a model and actually run my model as is on the stream, I would, I would call BS on that. right? Because there's a lot of work that model requires features. Those features are most likely not in the raw stream you're getting streamed in. And so you have to enrich it like I just showed you, and then you have to do a set of normalization, right? So most models will, uh, instead of taking, um, you know, what is driver certification in the database? It might be some string. You need to correlate that to some kind of binary value that the model will take as input. So in this case, I'm normalizing some of those features into things that my model expects, into a format. So at this point, I've got seven model features, right, that, that with the enriched data, and that's been normalized to what the model expects. And then I can call my, my model. So in this case, I've added a logistical regression model to my model registry. And now I'm picking, hey, what model do I want to execute? So I'm picking this driver violation prediction model. right? The output of that model, if you're using things like PMML to export that model, um, Sam will take a look at that PMML model and says, hey, the out there's one output, and that's the violation predicted. So it's already added that to my schema. Um, and so I've now, I've just, I've executed the model. Model's nothing more than coefficients. Got the results of the model. And at this point, I can now add a business rule that says, hey, anything the model spit out as yes, meaning yes, that's a, that there's a logist there's a possibility that driver is going to be in trouble or that truck is going to be in trouble. F I'm filtering on those events. And for those events, I'm sending that into another dashboard table. OK? So we've now just implemented requirements five through eight, right? Where I had a model my data scientist team has created. I've now published that model into this model registry. My app developer now has these requirements where he needs to actually call that model. For him to call that model, I have to enrich it with the features that that model requires, weather information, HR information, timesheet information, then normalize that, and then call the model, and spit that out to an alert. Okay? What does that look like? As a business analyst, right? So some of the rich visualizations you can create, 
would be something like this. Right? So the first set of ro rows that you see represents stuff around that first flow that we created. It uh, represents drivers who are speeding on the road. So 16 violations in the last hour. What drivers specifically? History of those violations over, let's say, a given route. Um, gives you things like um, graphs in terms of uh, speed to route. The second set of rows here represents output from the prediction model. So 25, 25 violation predictions have been predicted by the model over the last hour, right? And then interesting things you can do is because we have the lat long location, we can actually project where though whenever a model spit out that that driver is going to be in trouble, right, project that onto the map. So what you're seeing here is a visualization where in what parts of the US, based on the routes that the driver is using, is where the most amount of viola uh, viola violation predictions are coming, right? In this case, right now, it's around the, the St. Louis area because there are storms or something like that in the St. Louis region, right? So understanding from that perspective and looking at view of that data based on the models that you've created, right? And again, it, these are tooling for that business analyst. So with that said, hopefully I get, gave you a sense of implementing all eight of those requirements, right? So what's the next thing? So as I talk to customers, a common thing that they've said is, George, this is great, right? It's really made my, my developers more productive, those kind of things. But one thing is, like, they're still missing the ability to be able to test, right? Most of my developers follow best practices in terms of unit testing, right? or even before I deploy to a cluster, right? I want to be able to validate what I've built in since SAM, do some sanity checks and so forth. So one of the things that we've added within the community is this notion of a SAM test mode. And that is the ability simply as in my case, I want to mock out my sources and my sinks, right? If I'm doing a unit test, that's what, it, what it, it's all about, mocking out and giving it test data and validating and asserting that data. So SAM test data is what you can do visually in terms of how do you validate um, the correctness of your flow with, before deploying to the cluster. So let me walk you through that. All right, so what you can do here, so up to this point, we've been in this edit mode. So we've added this notion of a test mode. And what you can do here is you can give this a test name. So we'll say, I want to test the flow. So you saw those two, that the flow we created. I want to give it data where I want the model to spit out yes. So I want to validate that my enrichments are working, that my normalization is working, that the model predicts yes, and that's really the assertion from a visual standpoint that I want to do. That's a sanity check that I want to do, right? So let's say Berlin unit test one, right? And so you're mocking out your co two Kafka sources. So it detects there's two sources. And so in here, I give it my test data for my geo stream. And then for my speed stream, I give it the test data that it's going to spit out true for my model, right? So I've got set up my test data. And what I can do is now then I can execute that test data and see how that data traverses through the topology and visualize the validity of, of my app, right? run that again here. Let's 
So as it's running, what you can see here is in this test mode, my Kafka has been mocked out, and my destinations, my Druid has been mocked out. So what I want to see is this data flowing through my topology. So you're starting to see the joins, right? So the idea here is visualize right on the DAG as my data is flowing. So it's gone through the join, right? I see the join across the two streams. I see the split, do the three enrichments. This, this join should have three, the driver certification, the, the models. And then as it's going, it's going to eventually finish out, and my model is going to predict yes, right? This is a visual representation of how to test. What you can now do is you can do everything in this with, with Rust API. So everything I showed in the UI, you can actually write unit test like a typical JUnit test here. So in this case, everything I did in the UI used the RESTful APIs to be able to submit that test, set up my mock, and essentially do assertions, which then gives you the ability to do things like continuous integration and deliverance. So if I can write Maven test using RESTful APIs to build this, I can then set up pipelines like this to be able to build continuous integration and delivery pipelines. All right, so let me show you this real quick before I get kicked out, guys. So this is, oh, you guys are familiar with Jenkins. And so what, you've done, what I've done here is a CI, continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline, where every time I check in that particular app that I just created, I can export XML, put it into Git. Jenkins jobs runs. It packages it. It executes the unit test cases, so running Maven test, right, using that RESTful endpoints that I talked about in terms of setting up my sources. And then I can, if my tests pass, I can deploy it to maybe my test environment or my prod environment, or I've got that streaming application, right? So continuous integrated integration, automated unit test, and then continuous delivery if those tests pass, right? That's the goal of streaming analytics made to make all of this uh, a lot more easier to use. That's it, guys. Since we're out of time, if you guys have questions, come directly to here, and uh, I'll take up questions. Thanks for your time, guys.